Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. Today, on this video, I did one this morning called the Elijah Generation that I posted a lot of different places. But um, I'm probably going to only put this one on YouTube, and it's for hardcore kingdom seekers only. So if you believe in what Jesus said and you are ready to die in order to live as Christ asked, if you're willing to pick up your cross and carry it daily, then this might be the video for you. But if you're not at this place and you have not found any faith and you really don't know Jesus, this isn't the video for you, friend. Because I'm going to lay out some stuff here on why it is that I've been calling forth these riders like I have been. Because something happened last night. I, some of you might know of Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and he does different stuff. He's been talking a lot of the things that I have, but he evidently believes in Jesus, but me and him don't have the same Jesus th thought, right? He, he believes in violence and all that, and, and you know, but he put off a video last night, which had another video in it, and I had been predicting this for a while, on YouTube, and I mentioned it in my videos somewhere. I don't remember how long ago it was. But I told you that because they were doing the transgender thing and they were taking away the men or men and women or women, that they were going to draft your daughters. And it's now in Congress to uh, initiate a draft for da daughters. They are going to register your daughters. So you Christians that think that women shouldn't have to go murder in the name of corporate greed... Well, you're going to make a stand now or you're not. They're getting ready to close the door to, the, uh, to this cage that they built around us while everybody was sleeping. So, and I'm not some major leader here that I'm a child of God that became willing to die in order to live. And when I did, my father gave me a truth and started showing me things. And he gave me the courage to look at the things that everybody else is too afraid to look at. And I'm not the only person talking about this stuff, but I am the one that's connecting Jesus, the thought of Satan made flesh, which is a publicly traded corporation, and what's going on in America. Because this is the time, friend. It, it, in Revelation, it told you, flee from her, my people. So if you're a person that is not ready to do what Christ asked, is not ready to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and visit the sick and in prison, and willing to dedicate your life to God, or to make a stand against these corporations with me, well then, you ought not listen to this video. Because last night, when I posted that on Facebook, instantaneously, they shut it off. So, they're controlling so that you don't know that they're going to draft your daughters into the military to murder them for corporate greed, which is what they're doing. I mean, you all know, if you've listened to my videos, that Russia has NATO bases all lined their border, and this is no mistake. So, God told you this was coming in Revelation. So, I am telling you that the corporate elite have built underground arcs. I've left you plenty of proof of that. I've posted it in many videos. I left you all kind of proof showing you that what I'm saying is true. So, those of you that don't know what I'm saying is true, either never heard my videos before, or you don't have the backbone to look. And if you don't have the backbone to look, to see what's going on, and become willing to die in order to live, this is not your video. Because I'm going to tell you what they're doing. This is all written in Revelation, and it's coded out, and people aren't understanding it, and God held it to the end of the age, but he's revealed a little bit to me. And you can call me crazy, friend, but I'm telling you it's true. And that is that the corporate elite have built underground arcs, and they think they're going to go into their underground arcs and come up and steal my father's age. They know what's coming. You don't. They plan on initiating it. You don't. So, I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning, because the Holy Spirit only tells me what I need to know at the moment I need to know it. And I don't, I have to do everything in faith. I've done everything in faith. I sacrificed my entire life in faith, and I've just kept coming, and he keeps revealing more to me as I go. Some things directly come to me from God through the Holy Spirit, and other things he leads me around to different places to learn these things. Like I would predicted to you that they were going to draft your daughters, but I had no proof of that because I didn't see it anywhere, 
but now you can go to Off Grid Living with Doug and Stacy, and I'll see if I can find that video and put it in the link to this video. In the description, I'll put that video if I can find it. I just watched it last night. I, I would be able to find it on his channel. And also, I will put in there the interview that you need to go watch. And I'll put you a tour of one of their underground arcs because I am dead serious about this is what they're doing. And if you go watch that video, you will see that in part of that tour is that they talk about the radio to communicate with the other arcs. This isn't my imagination, friend. You can go look at it and see that it's true. So I'm not some special dude. I'm not courageous. I'm a coward. I'm a spineless belt jellyfish. But I made my father a promise, and he said that he'd give me the courage to do what needs to be done, and that's to speak the truth, to give you an opportunity to make a new choice. Because if you do not make a new choice, if you will not stand with me, you will perish into the darkness. If you will not do what Christ said, if you will not become willing to die in order to live, if you will not pick up your cross and carry it daily, then because you chose the spirit of selfishness over the spirit of love, you chose Satan over Christ, and therefore the kingdom that you said you wanted, you're not going to get because you didn't believe in Jesus, you believed in the Christian Pharisees which have lied to you. They're like snakes, they're serpents, they wiggle half a tongue. I'm not kidding about any of this, you can go look. Go look at what Jesus said about the Pharisees and you will see that they still love to wear their robes long and their phylacteries wide. They love the greetings in the markets place and the best seats at banquets. Nothing's changed, friend. Except for now they've turned Christianity into paganism to boot and it's just getting worse and worse. So the church age is over and done with and if you can't see that, I can't help you. <clears throat> so I am looking for the Elijah Riders, friend. And I'm here calling you. And I'm not saying you got to come answer to me because I might stand here and you'll stand over there. I'm going to kind of lay out to you how this is working. And I didn't know how it was working because God didn't show it to me in the beginning. He just told me I was going to be his mouthpiece and I was going to speak for him and I spoke for him. And that's what I've been doing. You don't have to believe that, but I'm just telling you it's true. They, st they were using the... Um, climate change stuff, that is actually backed up by the World Economic Forum and all those guys and the corporations, because what they're doing is they've been cutting your food supply. They've been doing this behind your back. I've been lead, I've left you all kinds of trails to, to follow to see all this different stuff that's going on, whether you chose to listen or not. That's not my fault. I did the best I could with what my father gives me at any given day. My only job is to become willing to die in order to live. My father needed a wilderness goat. He needed someone who would put his self on the altar to give you an opportunity to make a change. So now if you're a person that is hearing this video, you have a decision to make if you're willing to make the change. If you're not, you're going to perish in the darkness that you brought. And America will pay twice the debt. It will drink twice from the cup of the wrath of God. And I'm not lying to you about that. I've been explaining to you about all the geological problems in this nation and how they've figured it all out and most of you don't know because you don't watch documentaries you go listen to these liars tell you that if you just believe Jesus died on the cross for you you don't have to do anything that was a lie and Jesus told you so <clears throat> so this is coming to a head but I'm going to tell you what he showed me here at the end not in the beginning of what I was doing because I didn't understand what I was doing I'm not a smart dude and never have been I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but my father, he's brilliant. My father's your father. Jesus said, call no man father, but your father in heaven. So if you want to be a prodigal child, this is the time. Because you're going to either be fighting for Satan in his upcoming war, and your children are going to be, or you're going to make a stand now. And I'm not talking about with guns. If you all want to murder each other, American against American, well, then you can go your cowardice way and, and kill your neighbor and Jesus ain't giving you a seat in his kingdom, friend. So it's time that we make a stand. And this stand's going to cost some lives. And I'll, I'll lead the pack, friend. Not because I'm smart enough, but I'm just dumb enough. I'm not dumb. I just know my father. And I've seen my father in the beginning. And because I know him, I love him. And I will not allow you to let them cast all his children into the darkness that could have ended up in the kingdom, but you were too selfish to stand up and do something 
worth entering the kingdom for. So there's the facts. So you're going to live with me and die with me, or you're going to let the dead bury the dead, and you're going to stay in the coffin that you're in, and you ain't going to make it into the kingdom. I'm telling you, you don't have to join me. I'm telling you, get a red-letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said in red. That's just a fact. But they are planning on crashing the system. You know they can't bring that digital dollar on without doing that. Because there's no way Americans are going to just give up their guns. They've been trying to get you to give them up. They know what Europe has already given them up. America is the last one to have the ability to make a stand. Everybody else has given up their guns. There'll be no civil war because you can't use pitchforks against bazookas. And tanks and machine guns. So they've, their, their civil war time is done. They're going to fall to the beast. That's just a fact. But America has an opportunity to make a change. But if you do it with guns, we'll murder each other off and it'll fall into chaos. So I'm not recommending that either. You're going to have to make a stand one way or the other. If you don't have the courage to do something, you're going to perish in this. They've been doing this. There's a reason they're flooding everybody across the border. So they took that climate control and have been cutting the fertilizer in all the third world countries, starving people out so that they would cross our border and the European borders. They are literally attacking the West with immigrants. And they are doing that under the, the guise of climate control. So if you don't want to look at any of this, you can call me a liar, but I'm just telling you the truth. And... I've been launching my arrows into the cloud that everyone could see. That is the iCloud, the internet cloud. It's the cloud that everyone could see. Your father's rider is here. And I'm not the only one. And I can't tell you which one will be the one that's declared in Revelation, right? Because how do I know? But I can tell you right now, I wear my father's crown. I, wear, I ride his white horse. And I carry a bow. And I've been launching arrows, so by the time I clear the rides, I'm not going to have any arrows left. Most of the other riders won't either. <clears throat> but all these people, it's, what's going down is going down. If you're not going to make a change, if you're not going to try to make the decision, you're going to end up wearing the mark of the beast because it's coming. So, and it doesn't matter what it is. It just, you just know it's coming because he told you they were going to hide in their caves and pray for death and death wouldn't come. That is the corporate elite. That have been setting you up. I'm just telling you the truth. I've been telling you the truth the whole time. I'm not here to lie to you. I've just been telling you what documentary after documentary tells you and shows you. So the truth is that the Bible is accurate. It told you all of this in code in advance. Now, if you don't want to go look at that, I understand. But then, like I said, you shouldn't be listening to this video because you're one of those people that you said that you know Jesus, but you really don't know Jesus, nor are you going to get to know Jesus because you're going to choose Satan over Christ, which is to choose the world over God. So if you do make that decision now, that's the debt you're going to pay. I've been telling you that a thought of Satan made flesh is a publicly traded corporation. I'm not the only one saying it, friend. And these errors have been being launched. So Christians are coming to the realization that if they, if they worship the beast, they're going to be trapped in his kingdom, which is the coming kingdom, the, the tribulation time. You, you haven't understood what real horror is yet. America has been so used to living in this alternate reality where they're going to just get lifted up. That's just not the truth. If you're not in the spirit of love and you haven't done what Christ asked, he's going to say, I don't know you. I was hungry. You didn't feed me. I was naked. You didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Now what I need is I need some of you that are willing to pick up your cross and carry it. This net message needs to go out. And I've been standing alone, as you know. I don't have anybody. Nobody supports me. I got nothing, friend. I exist on a hope and a prayer. But that's all I need because... Christ gave me hope, and I give him prayer, right? And so therefore, my life is a miracle. I never planned on surviving this. Still don't. Somebody's going to have to, you know, somebody, they're going to point the finger at somebody. You know, when it all goes down, everybody's going to want to point the finger at somebody. And if you point the finger, then you're going to need to point the finger at something. That's what happened with Jesus, right? 
They pointed a finger at him, blamed him, and he took the heat. He was the ultra goat of Yom Kippur, one of two scapegoats that I've told you about again and again. So there's a lot more going on than what Christianity is understanding about the Bible because it's all coded out so that you wouldn't see it. <clears throat> so the, the rider on the white horse with a bow is a scapegoat. He's the wilderness goat. He spent his time in the wilderness on a camera talking to you about Christ and telling you that if you don't believe in Christ and do what he asked, you will not enter his kingdom because Christ told you he would deny you at the end of the age. And these Pharisees are liars and thieves, and they've stole your kingdom from you. They stole it from us all. I'm not here to blame anybody, but we're all accountable. You now have a red-letter edition of the Bible, or you could, and therefore you could know what Jesus said and do what he asked and find a greater kingdom right here, right now. You're going to need that kingdom if you want to stand with me. Because if you don't have that kingdom, Satan, which is your thought of selfishness and fear, will overcome you, and you will fall to the darkness. I'm not lying about that. My thought of Satan comes to me often trying to drag me back into the darkness, and I'm not going. I might not be the perfect son. I'm not here to say I am. I'm not here to say I'm the firstborn, because I'm not. I'm the prodigal son. I'm the one that will not let you just do this to your kids. So if you think it's okay that they're going to murder your kids for corporate greed, then I hope you hung up this video a long time ago because you'll be the one to shoot the messenger. One of you is going to want to take me out. I don't personally care, friend. You can't stop me because it's not me doing it. It was my father that's been doing it from the beginning. He told you the end in the beginning. The Euphrates River was told that it was going to dry up. It's 60% dried up. And the only reason that it probably hasn't completely at this point is because of those dams they've got. But they've got caves that have surfaced, so you know that those angels have escaped if they were ever trapped under there. Though I don't personally believe there was angels trapped there. It was a sign of the times. It's a way of telling you that it's the end of the age and you make a new choice and choose love over selfishness, which is to choose Christ over the world or Christ over Satan. That is what Jesus was talking about. So the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience. I've been telling you that all along. That's what the kingdom is about. But because we didn't make that choice as a nation, and we did this in God's name, one nation under God, and it's on your money, friend. So don't tell me that you didn't do it in the name of God. And if don't tell me that, that you can now say, oh, well, but it's no longer a Christian nation. That isn't what you proclaim, friend. You've done all this murdering and killing in my father's name, and you did it for the corporations. They've been doing it. Before now, you couldn't have known it because it was hidden. But with the internet, I've been laying it out for you. Everybody's been laying it out for you. You can tell the truth. And if you don't want to know the truth, then you're going to pay your debt. That's the facts. So this is a time to, to choose Christ over the world. It is time to clean your garments and mount your horses. If you're not ready to mount, flee from her, my people. That's all I'm telling you. Because this ain't going down good. There's just no way it is. And everybody knows it. But everybody's too afraid. Their thought of fear and selfishness keeps them scared and not looking because they don't want to think about it because they don't have any faith. And because they've got no faith, they've got no love, and they've got no kingdom. They are not carrying a white stone with their name on it. So it's time for you to decide, friend. Are you carrying a white stone? And if you're not, do you want to? Christ told you how to get it. You don't have to listen to me. You can listen to him. He told you. But he told you that only the elect were going to survive. So that tells you that he's electing people to survive into the new age. So the church has lied to you about this pre-tribulation rapture and everybody that said they believe in Jesus is going to just get removed. That was a lie from the beginning because Christ outright told you it was. But nobody wants to listen to him. They want to listen to these lying Pharisees tell them warm, fuzzy things to make them feel good about being greedy and choosing selfishness over love and then act like you're going to get this heaven when you've done nothing to deserve it. You left your neighbor starve while you were out driving your fancy cars and caring more about your own selfishness than you cared about your neighbor. Christ told you that that was not acceptable if you want to enter his kingdom. That's a fact. It's not about perfection, but it is about coming in alignment with God and giving your thoughts to him. That's how I do this. That's how I'm that's how a spineless jellyfish 
doesn't crumble in fear. So this day has come. I'm telling you, friend, that it's time. And if you're not ready, then you're just not going to make it. I'm not the only prophet calling for all this, friend. The, the, the storm is clearing the horizon. Anybody can see it that looks. If you're not ready to ride, get ready to ride. If you don't want my Father's kingdom, then prepare to ride through hell. But those that want the kingdom, you receive it by grace, but the only way to keep it is to give it away. Christ told you that from the beginning. So now we're going to have to have to have some of us that are going to be willing to stand up and try to delay what's coming. If you let this go down, they're going to go into their underground arcs, all sneaky-like, and then come up and steal my father's age. That is the reason my father releases the rider through Christ. Christ is the one who breaks the seal. The seal gets broke by Christ. The first rider is broke by Christ because he is not going to let the corporate elite go underground and come up and steal my father's age. They are sons of Satan. They are sons of selfishness. He told you then that he wasn't going to allow that now. So now you have a choice of making a stand or not. But the choice you make is going to be the one you have, friend, and I can't help you. I was only here to be willing to die in order to live. And I'm not some self-righteous dude. I'm a guy that just doesn't deserve the kingdom. Do you know who I was? You'll know for sure I was a prodigal son, friend. But if my father will love me and forgive me my debts, he'll forgive you yours, friend. I don't care what you've done. Turn. Accept Christ as your Savior. Do what he asked. Receive the kingdom right now. Receive it by grace and then keep it by giving it away. That's what he said. That's what he meant. And get baptized because he told you to. These churches are insane. They're disgusting. And I'm outright telling you so. So you can do whatever you want. I don't plan on surviving this. I told you from the beginning and I'm telling you at the end. That I'm shooting my arrows until God either gives me an army or kills me. Because I'm your wilderness goat. However, it doesn't matter. There's enough people shooting arrows. You can't take out... My father set this up so that Satan couldn't stop it. <laughs> my father's brilliant and Satan's a moron. And all these corporate elite and uh, politicians that followed them... They're morons too, just like Satan, because they thought they were going to overcome God. They were fools. And now they're going to pay their debt. They're going to go into their underground arcs, and they're going to pray for death, and death isn't going to come. So if you're one of the corporate elite, and you, you're thinking about coming and killing me, you might want to think about repenting instead, and staying out of those arcs, because you ain't surviving it. That's a promise. It was promised by my father. And since he made it to them... I'm making it to you. I don't care how my father buries you in your tombs. If you think you're going to just murder off the general population, you are sick and disgusting, and you're going to get what you owe. And when you drag your kids down there into them arcs with you, they're getting it with you. So this would be a time to teach your children and to repent and about what Jesus said and about what the Bible said, because if you don't, you are not going to survive like you think you are for you corporate elite to think you're going to go into these underground arcs. My father will not allow you to do this and then survive it. That is a fact. My father knew the end in the beginning. He knew you were going to choose selfishness over love. And therefore he has a contingency plan called a son, the firstborn, the only begotten son that breaks the first seal because my father was loving in the beginning and he'll be loving the end. And Christ breaks the seal so my father doesn't have to. Because my father is love. And Christ is the king of this world. And he is divine in nature. And so therefore, you're going to make a new choice. Or you're going to perish. That's it. There's no other choice to be had here, friend. I'm, I've been trying to coddle you and tell you how to receive the kingdom. But nobody wants to go do it. Nobody wants to make a stand. If I die alone, it's going to be an empty kingdom, friend. Because <clears throat> all of you that worship these corporations that make money more important and, and your fancy houses and your big cars more important than feeding your neighbor and taking care of him at these final hours, 
My father's going to let you ride through hell and keep all of that so that you can appreciate it while they're stealing it from you. So you can now make a new decision. And if you don't make a new decision, then there's going to be no decision to be had. You're going to have the decision you made. And Christ told you this. And anybody that calls him a liar, I'll call a liar. I don't have to have the courage to die, friend. All I have to do is have the courage to live. Death comes to us all. None of you getting out of here alive. Except for, he said that a few promised that he, the roads in the spirit of love would actually be saved from that final hour. But that wasn't the Christian population, friend. They're a bunch of serpents that have listened to a bunch of selfish liars. So I'm telling you, if you want to know Christ, this is the moment to do it. This is the hour to make your choice. And I'm not saying this because I hate you. I'm saying this because I love you. Because I'm saying it, there's just no way that this goes down good for me if you haven't figured that out. But I'm not going to let you do this to my nephew and my other family and your family. If you want to be murdering fools and let them just kill your kids, then, then you can do that. It's your free will. But my father's not giving you a reward in the kingdom for just letting this go down while you chose selfishness over love. So I've been very clear about this through my entire message that selfishness over love will get you cast into the darkness. I'm not talking about eternity, but I'm going to tell you every minute in the hell that's coming is going to feel like eternity. And for those of you that think that hell isn't here, you've just never experienced it yet. The word he used was Gehenna, a state or place of mental suffering. It was a reference to a group from the tribe of Judah that used to sacrifice their children on the altar to a god called Moloch. Well, America has been sacrificing its children on the altar to their corporate gods. You're going to now make a choice. Which god do you serve? The god of money or the god of Abraham? The god of Christ? Because those that make the wrong choice will ride through hell and you will pay all the de debt you owe. And it won't be for eternity, but it's going to feel like it, friend. I'm telling you that right now. All right, we just know I love you, period. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want to watch anyone go through this. If I have to die in order for you to live, then please go receive your life. Make a new choice. Help me help others make a new choice. Stop hiding in your tombs. Stop hiding in your caskets. Let the dead bury the dead. It's time, friend. Make a stand. Christ or nothing. All right, well, I love you because my father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.